in 21st century, none of the Georgian residents could imagine that the new Berlin Wall could, could appear in the center of the South Caucasus, but seems to be it is reality right now. It's been seven years since Russian and Georgian forces went to war. Though short-lived, the 2008 war was fiercely contested, resulting in the loss of hundreds of lives. The reason? A breakaway region in the Georgian heartland known as South Ossetia. But even now, the issues with regions like South Ossetia and Abkhazia in the west of Georgia are yet to be resolved. I don't think that the full extent of pressure is exerted on Russia yet, though the understanding that it's a not Ossetian, Georgian, Ukrainian problem, but it's a European security problem. I think this understanding is increasing in Europe. So, in the years since the war, what has happened in this breakaway region? And what bearing does it have on Georgia's future and on their aspirations to join the EU and NATO? So this barbed wire fence is the administrative boundary line between Georgia on one side and South Ossetia on the other. Now, South Ossetia internationally is recognised as part of Georgia, but ever since the Georgia-Russia War of 2008, Russia has recognised South Ossetia as its own independent state. These border fences were put up by Russian forces in 2011, which meant that many of the residents in this village, Khovaleti, found themselves using the Georgian Larry on one day and the Russian ruble on the next. Over the hill, there is a church of Khurvaleti and there is a cemetery of Khurvaleti. And these ordinary residents, ordinary Khurvaletians can't access their own church and the cemetery where their relatives were buried. That's the problem and that's the reality. And when they do try and cross this border, they face the threat of detainment, as 82-year-old farmer and Khurvaleti resident David Vanashvili explains. <laughs> The problem isn't just that the fences exist, but that they've been moving. Just two weeks before our visit, the Georgian government claims Russian troops moved the border banners a further 300 metres into Georgia. The barriers are now just half a kilometre from the E60 highway, Georgia's only route from east to west. The government also claims that they now include part of the strategically important Baku Supsa pipeline, which transports oil from Azerbaijan through Georgia to the Black Sea. In case there will be uh, any intervention from Russia in the future, they can take this road within minutes and they can actually cut the country in two parts. So, and basically that creates a, some sort of, uh, you know, the serious security threat for Georgian statehood and for its independence as well. While a conflict similar to the one in 2008 remains highly unlikely, many Georgians see the Russian steps in South Ossetia and Abkhazia as a way for Russia to keep Georgia destabilised. What Russia is doing, it's creating conflicts in the post-Soviet countries that are uh, striving for NATO integration and then saying that you cannot have those countries in NATO because these are conflict areas and you're going to have headache with them. So leave this region alone. That's the basic message that it's sending through South Ossetia, which is occupied and it's uh, gradually being annexed as well. Uh, through Crimea, through uh, eastern Ukraine, it's all the same. These are conflict regions that cannot be part of your Atlantic uh, alliance. While the Georgian government must worry about what the situation in South Ossetia means for Georgia's future, it is the people who live there, like David Vanashvili, who are currently losing their homes and their land in the dispute. While for the time being at least the Georgian public remain overwhelmingly pro-European, the fear is that the longer the situation in South Ossetia continues and the longer Georgia's progress towards NATO and EU membership remains in limbo, the higher the risk of public support diminishing. This is Jake Tutman from Georgia for NATO Channel.